The right wing war against Representative Ilhan Omar has a number of different weapons in its arsenal. Uh, lately, Donald Trump has taken it, just making up quotes that she supposedly said about Al Qaeda and things like that. She didn't say it, um, but nobody checks anything anymore, so it doesn't really matter. And that's all well and good, but it's not as good as video. You really want to see Ilhan Omar saying something. And if she doesn't actually say something horrible with a bit of selective editing, you can make it look kind of bad. And so we're going to show you a video. It's from an interview she did with Al Jazeera last year. Now, all of this is the interview. Parker Malloy took the video and she highlighted the section that has been spread on right wing Twitter. So you're going to see the full video, but notice the section in the middle that has been edited out. A lot of conservatives in particular would say that the rise in Islamophobia is a result not of hate, but a fear, a legitimate fear, they say, of quote unquote jihadist terrorism, whether it's Fort Hood or San Bernardino or the recent truck attack in New York. Uh, what do you say to them? I would say uh, uh, our, our country should be more fearful um, of, of, of white men across our country because they are actually um, causing uh, most of the deaths within this country. Um, and so if fear was the, the driving force of, of, of policies to keep America safe, Americans safe inside of this country, um, we should be uh, profiling, monitoring, um, and, uh, and, and creating policies to fight the radicalization of white men. So if you saw the video there, the like her describing what is the rhetorical point she's making was oddly cut for time, I guess, in making it seem like what she doesn't believe and isn't advocating for is what she's advocating for. But I don't even know why was she even the deceptively edited one is that mm -hmm. controversial. So let me expand upon it. So the Anti-Defamation League said that it, last year in 2018, 98% uh, of the attacks uh, that led to deaths, ter domestic terrorist attacks were done by white right wingers, 98%. So if you want to get all afraid of, of someone and, and take action and profile them, well, it should clearly be white men. Okay, well, you say, all right, well, look, that's just one year. Okay, and by the way, uh, that's the Anti-Defamation League. I don't know if, <laughs> ironically, they say Ilhan Omar is anti Semitic, but I can hear right wingers typing right now. Who cares about the AD? A bunch of Jews don't care about them. Right? Anyway, <laughs> so, but let's put that aside. How about the FBI? Well, Christopher Ray, Trump's pick for the head of the FBI, testified just a couple of days ago and said, yeah, the majority of the attacks, domestic terrorist attacks, are from white supremacists. The overwhelming majority is from white supremacists. There's also anti government extremists who are also white right wing men, and some from incel extremists who hate women, also right wing men, white men. Okay, now you say, all right, well, look, Jane, it's just one year. Okay, fine, the FBI agrees with the ADL, so I lost that argument. Okay, so how about if it's longer period? Well, if you look at uh, the decade before 2009 to 2018, well, it turns out 75% of the attacks, or three quarters of the attacks, again, according to the ADL, are from right wing extremists. Okay, if you go all the way back to right before or right after September 11th, guess what number you're gonna find? This is according to the Government Accountability Office. So now these are several different organizations all agreeing all across this different timeline, and they say about 75% of the attacks are by right wing extremists who are white men. Now, it is a perfectly fair point to say the country's 75% white. <laughs> so it's somewhat proportional, right? Or completely proportional. Now, the country's 50% women, and all of this, almost every attack is by a guy. So, again, if you wanted to be accurate in who you profiled, you would profile men, period. You'd leave women alone completely. Now, we're not saying profile white men. And Ilhan Omar didn't go as far as I did. She, she's definitely not saying that. She's saying, why are you asking to profile people who are doing a tiny percentage of the attacks as opposed to the people who are doing three quarters to 100% of the attacks? If you wanted to profile someone, you would profile the people doing the great majority of the attacks. But we don't wanna do that, we wanna drive fear and hatred. And that's her point, it's a 100% accurate point backed up by data and logic. So of course, it drives Republicans crazy. Yeah, I mean, it was it, what she was saying was right on. She was responding to the question honestly. He asked a, the question about fear. She's saying, really, well, if you look at it statistically, 
the people who you should be afraid of is this group that's being radicalized and they're white men. I mean, it really is as, uh, as obvious a point as can be made. Uh, yet it needs to be made over and over and over again. She was making it articulately. She's, uh, she is that, right? She's very, she, she speaks clearly and I think she speaks calmly to the point, even as she's being assailed constantly by the right. Yeah, yeah. I, sorry, John, before you have more details and, and thoughts on it, I, I wanted to say just a point on what Mark said, which is that the people who speak the truth get attacked more. Like if you, if you are misleading, you're gonna get actually attacked less. It's kind of a weird irony. It's the truth that bothers them the more. Like, oh, you say, well, the majority of the attacks are by white right wing extremist men. They're like, how dare you? I mean, they get triggered more than you could possibly imagine. I, I once uh, talked about how the Holocaust was done by Christians. Every conservative blog read the headline. Like they're like, can you believe he said it was done by Christians? Obviously, it was the Buddhists. <laughs> no, it's obvious that it was the Christians who did it. And they say, no, no good Christian could have possibly done it. So the Christians who did do it are now no longer in hindsight Christian. Whereas since all the Muslims are bad, when a Muslim does an attack, all 1.6 billion Muslims are guilty. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they can't see the hypocrisy and irony of that is unbelievable. They have no logic at all, it's stunning. And and I could go on and on the other day, I said uh, progressives want everything uh, in this country that expanded liberty, including uh, the Civil War. And they're like, oh yeah, now they're gonna think that the North was liberal <laughs> and, and the South was conservative, outrageous. So if you say something true, it will trigger them more, not less. Yes, and uh, so this was a very convenient thing to put together. I don't know who did put this video together, who initially cut out that section. Um, but they, they didn't care about the people that would see it. They, didn't, they don't care about the truth, obviously. They had a mission, and that is to just try to destroy uh, Ilhan Omar. And uh, because it, if you're a right winger, it feels good to believe that she said something discriminatory against you because you go through your day just hoping that you'll get to, be, to pitch yourself as a victim. Uh, right wingers, uh, from pundits to regular people to right wing politicians, just started tweeting it out. Automatically, no thinking. They probably didn't even watch the full video, let alone actually go and find the interview itself. So, Marco Rubio, immediately, I am sure the media will now hound every Democrat to denounce the statement as racist, right? Well, uh, he made the mistake of tweeting out a video that was edited to uh, fool people like him, and he helped them to do that. When that was pointed out to him, he uh, took that as an opportunity to learn. No, he didn't. He said this, no, you got duped into proving my point when it was pointed out. <laughs> my tweet wasn't about her, it was about the double standard and how many in the media would react. Okay, Marco, but to what? To react to you tweeting out a video that has been deceptively edited. She said white men, but in a rhetorical point, the point of which is that we should not racially or religiously profile anyone. And even when it's been pointed out, He's a part of the modern day Republican Party where facts don't matter, there's no accountability for anything. And so why would he apologize? Just double down and say that you were right. And indeed, while it was far more, there, there's some politicians, there were so many commentators. So simpletons like Dave Rubin instantly were tweeting it out. Dana Loesch, she tweeted this, Democrat privilege, so far no one in the media is reporting how an elected member of Congress is advocating for racial and gender profile. It might be because they watched the full video and she was explicitly not doing that. Uh, Dana Loesch is so sure that she was right that when it was pointed out afterward, after she ran the, the video on her radio show, uh, she began tweeting and tweeting and tweeting and tweeting constantly varying reasons why she was still right. And depending on what the moment was, oh, I totally watched the full thing. Oh, like they're stretching that this is selectively edited. Does anybody really think that this was not edited in a way to fool people into thinking something that's untrue? Plus the damage is done. I mean, these are there are a lot of people here when you put it all together who are then tweeting out that video and it's a completely erroneous and, and hacked and, and, and edited video. And it's that old line, that the Churchill line, the, the uh, a lie gets halfway around the world before the truth even gets its trousers on. I mean, that really is what happens here. That video, the edited one, gets out there in such a big way that the truth telling, the actual video, doesn't even have a chance to really knock it down in any sort of appreciable way. Yeah, and, and really fast on that too, because there are people who just instantly retweeted it or, or added something. Virtually every right wing pundit did that. Uh, they did the thing that people do, whereas if something is convenient for you, you don't check it, you just tweet it out. Uh, but there is a layer that's worse than that, and that is Fox News that night. Because after we already knew that it had been edited, Tucker Carlson used the video, Laura Ingram used the video, all of them. They like Tucker Carlson, he's he's the thinking man's pundit, right? He's the guy, <laughs> he thinks a little bit deeper. You know, he's not just Bill O'Reilly or Sean Hannity. He's 
He's a, you have to be fair to him, okay? No, you don't have to be fair because he's not being fair to anyone because he used it knowing at that point that it was wrong because he cares more about taking out a woman of color in the US government than he does about reality. So to that point, look, the main point she's making in the interview is we should not profile anyone. They all lie and say, can you believe she wants to profile white men? No, she was using white man as an, as an example of why not to profile, right? So they're like, we don't care, we don't care what the reality is, we just wanna attack her. And the main point that Tucker Carlson and Sean Hannity made last night were, can you believe she's fearful of angry white men? Aren't you guys gonna do something about it? <laughs> uh, that would seem to be proving her point, even if that was her point. Yeah. On the go, don't worry, we got you covered. You can still listen to TYT at our new podcast network. Find us on Apple Podcasts, the Google Play Store, or at tyt.com slash podcast.